So work on our breath, body, movement, connection. Um, you know, we tend to, once we start to get worked up, it's a lot of the times we're just kind of lost track of our breath. We're either not breathing or we're breathing really shallow or we have an extremely uh, long breath that's not, you know, like we're not using our diaphragm properly, which is a very large muscle and it's very underdeveloped in many of us which, you know, it takes time and practice to really strengthen and connect to these things and to, like, instantly be able to pull yourself back. You know, one thing I've really tried to press into anybody who's came in front of me is you got to find a little bit of discipline. You have to really intentionalize sitting down and making time for anything that's going to help you grow. You know, we tend to, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to fix things in the external world, but really what we need to be doing is bringing ourselves to center and just being the best and most stable human being that we can manage to be, and then everything else will just kind of fall into place. It may not always seem like it, but that is definitely, definitely a truth of life. You fix yourself, you work on yourself, and then things just kind of work out. So we're going to hop right to this today. Let's bring our palms together and rub them briskly. We'll tune in with the Adi Mantra. It's Ong Namo, Guru Dev Namo. Press the base of your thumbs against your heart center. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale. <coughs> inhale to tune in. Ong Namo, Guru Dev. your breath for just one moment. If you have a mobile and practice, squeeze up on mobile. And... Exhale. Hold the breath out. Squeeze. Inhale. Exhale. Relax the hands down. Palms up on the knees. And just find a couple breaths. There's a lot of different tools in meditation. We have pranayam, which is breath work. We have visualizations, which is closing the eyes and seeing things internally, whether it's focusing on a different area of our body or focusing, you know, uh, putting an image in our head or, you know, tratakam, which is staring at an object for an extended period of time, which oftentimes is a candle or something of that nature. And then we have you know, the movement-based meditations, there's mantras, there's just a huge amount of tools that exist throughout the space and time of meditation practices. And to ever think that we can experience all of them in one lifetime is probably not true. But what we can do is experience what's put in front of us and try to gain from it. So today we're going to work on some pranayama, some breath work. We're going to just start with some slow, deep breathing, speed it up a little bit, move some energy, and then move our bodies and then we're going to come back down and just ground out with a little bit of mantra. <clears throat> just bring your hands, palms up on the knees. 
We're going to inhale slow, filling up the diaphragm and then the chest, the intercostal or the rib muscles expand. Then exhale, your chest is going to deflate and your diaphragm is going to move back towards the spine. If you're not very connected to your diaphragm, place one of your hands right underneath your sternum, your solar plexus, and just really feel that expand at the beginning of each inhale and it contract at the end of each exhale. Slow deep breathing. Eyes are closed, breath is long and deep, and just make it as long and as deep as you can manage in this moment. Tune into your breath. So if it's only a three second inhale and a three second exhale, that's acceptable. If you can manage 20 seconds each way, that's acceptable too. Just do what you need to do. And any time that we're practicing these sorts of things, we want to keep our spine erect. So really uplift in the rib cage, pulling it away from our hips. The natural curve, inward curve of the lower spine, the lumbar spine. Then there's a little bit of an outward curve of the thoracic spine. And then the cervical comes back in a bit. Breathe long and deep, finding your depth of breath. Inhaling slowly, your diaphragm expands, your chest lift. Exhaling, your chest deflates. Your diaphragm moves back towards the spine. Breathe slow and deep. fully hold your breath for just a moment exhale hold the breath out inhale let's bring our left hand over heart so right over heart center above the sternum Right hand will be in Gyan Mudra, so forefinger touches thumb tip, which mudra means seal. Just fingers pointing up at your side. Shoulders are relaxed. We're going to inhale slow and deep and hold the breath for a moment. And then exhale slow and deep, hold the breath out. And yes, I'm wearing pants, they're just short shorts. <laughs> We're inhaling, holding the breath at the top, but relaxed. Don't stress your strain. If you feel yourself gritting your teeth, squeezing anywhere, just check yourself. Maybe let go. Breathe slowly. And then when you need to, you exhale, hold the breath out.
if you feel reactive to this, if it's stressing you or straining you, just long, deep breathing now. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Beautiful. Just palms up on the knees. Take a couple deep breaths. Close your eyes and then open them slightly. Stare at the tip of your nose. This is a eye gaze that helps bring awareness to your third eye center, which lines up with your pituitary gland, which is the seat of intuition, according to yogic thought and theory and the science of yoga. The more we sit and meditate, the more intuitive we become, the more clear our path lays out before us, we become a point where our past and our path may be at odds with each other as we realize that we have not been in service of ourselves. And those points can be a bit scary, a bit intense. But once you're on the other side, they are some of the most valuable lessons you'll ever learn. It just requires a bit of patience and grace. And these breaths, especially if you have a breathing disorder, like any COPD or asthma, they're extremely valuable. I was asthmatic from the age of five on smoked cigarettes for 21 years and managed to cure my asthma while still smoking cigarettes. And I can go to the mountains and outrun people from the mountains just via this breath work and the exercise, the practices of this yoga. You know, I'm trained KRI, Kundalini Research Institute, which, which is one of the lineages of Kundalini Yoga. And they call it the yoga of awareness because it makes you hyper aware of your body and your mind and how they just can be out of sync and in any moment you know you may be feeling very messy or feeling one way or another but you just you're extremely aware of it so it's like you're a silent witness standing off to the side as you're like depressed or anxious or you know whatever it may be you know, these meditative stool tools, they don't give you like a permanent state of bliss typically. Our world is entirely too chaotic for that. And most of us can't just sit up on a mountain in an ashram or a temple and meditate nine hours a day to obtain that current, that permanent state of samadhi. You know, we're very much so householders. We live in this world <laughs> and we have to learn to bring ourselves in and just you know, process what happens to us. So many of us just spend our lives bottling everything that comes before us. And one thing that this yoga will do, as I know many people have experienced with any amount of practice, is start to release that stuff. And sometimes it's like you shake up a bottle of kombucha or Coke and you just pop that top off real quick. It explodes everywhere and hits the people around you and it can be kind of ugly. But that's why we come to these practices. So we have the tools to make that not ugly many people have experienced these awakenings suddenly and you know from the outside we look crazy we look like we're losing our minds when in all actuality we're gaining our minds I had an experience back in 2016 where I was I just like all of the sadness that I had been bottling for quite a while I experienced a 
series of traumatic events that revolved around my group and I just after like the third fourth one I closed off bottled everything up and then one day they just exploded out there's about a month of just like and uh, that period is what really solidified me in my practice and came, made me really press into it. It was that and this other physical illness. So it was like a mental illness and a physical illness. Over time, just really made me whole in this. And I know that all of you have the capacity in you to find the self-healing, to find your deep, latent power. It just You have to be patient with yourself and graceful. And you have to accept where you are now before you can move forward. If you're constantly resisting where you are now and constantly fighting yourself, it just makes that growth hard. You know, whether you're an addict or whether you're just somebody who's got anger issues or whatever it may be, you have to accept where you're at before you can move forward. Until then, you know, you, you get stuck. And I know we've all felt stuck before. We've all been a, a place where we just Oh, how do I move forward? How can I get out of this job? How can I get out of this relationship? How can I get out of this brain? <laughs> you know, but once you accept, you can move forward. It's like cigarettes. I, as a yogi, was smoking, and I felt so at odds with that. And I was just judgmental, beating myself down, beating myself up for it. And it was a time that I just really accepted the fact that I'm a cigarette smoker that I quit like a week later. It was a pretty funny relation because it was like, you know, we think that putting that intense pressure on ourselves, sorry, I'm plugging in my computer so I don't lose you. Putting that intense pressure on ourselves and like self-judgment is going to help us, but it doesn't, you know, we got to be graceful. You just think about whenever you're dealing with other people in your lives and they have problems if you deal with them aggressively what happens you push them further into those but if you come from a point of love and understanding they may get annoyed or they may get you know react to you but in time they're going to see that you were coming from a place of love and if they don't then i mean that's on them not on you so yes we learn to treat ourselves well and it helps us treat everyone else well it's a full circle sort of thing I'm gonna do a little bit of breath of fire. Breath of fire is an equal inhale, exhale through the nose. And really when you're exhaling, pull in on your diaphragm, pull in on your belly and just make that movement at the navel center. So your whole belly is gonna be moving. Just over exaggerate it for a time if you're not familiar with this breath. Just really. But we're working in equal inhale, exhale. So you're going to inhale for about half a second, exhale half a second. If you need to, put a hand on your diaphragm. If not, palms up on the knees. Touch your surya mudra, your uh, ring finger to your thumb tip. This is your energetic quality. It's also the power of this seal is to accept change. Eyes closed. Start at the tip of your nose. So barely open your eyes. Breath of fire. also a great tool if you start to feel gas pains you can move a lot out real quick and if you ate breakfast this morning you may be noticing it's breakfast of fire
just find any quality in the breath, the stability. Really feel your navel center moving out when you inhale and back in when you exhale. This is a great way to strengthen your diaphragm and your connection to it. Inhale deep, hold your breath, engage up on mole bond. If you don't have a mole bond practice, just sit with the breath to hold in. Exhale, hold the breath out. Inhale, exhale, relax the hands. few breaths, close the eyes. There are many goals in meditation, in yoga, which one of them, the one that is the most daunting, is that point of shunya, which means zero, so then no mind which in the West, most of the practices taught, are, they don't even bring that up because it just seems so unobtainable. Just I mean, nearly impossible to us because our minds are just going all the time. We're, you know, just constantly stimulated internally or externally. And just the idea of like, oh, this, this going silent? How does that work? I can tell you it's possible. <laughs> it's really possible. It just takes time. But you know, ultimately, we learn to become sort of a witness to our thoughts. So we can kind of detach ourselves from the, uh, the reactivity to the thoughts and detach ourselves from the external world a bit and just go inward. And sometimes inward is a really circular running mind. It's, it's okay. So let's bring our hands to our knees, palms down. We're going to do some Sufi grinds. So whenever we're inhaling, we're really, we're going to go to one side. This is a circle leading with the heart center, pretty much. So when you're inhaling, you're going forward and exhaling, you're going back and just grind that circle. Your pelvis should be tilting forward as you go forward and rounding back as you go back. If you're sitting up on a chair, this may look different if you are. Laying down, this won't be possible. <laughs> but just inhaling forward, exhaling back, going in a full circle. Feeling that connection between your pelvis, your lowest spine, your thoracic spine, and your cervical spine. So just close your eyes and feel it. And if you're really tight, you may do very small circles leading with your heart. There's no one right way or wrong way for any of these things. Yoga unites you to you, teaches you about you. It's very much so an experiential thing. The teacher is here to teach you and guide you into finding yourself, self-realization. Next time you're forward, reverse directions. Inhaling forward, exhaling back, and mentally vibrate as you inhale sat, exhale nam. This is a tool to keep your mind directed. A lot of people, once they connect with this mantra, which means truth is my name, they'll find themselves utilizing it at other points in their life when they need to bring themselves down from an anxiety attack or something along those lines. Inhale 
Inhale, center. Hold your breath. Really feel your spine stretch up. Stretch the arms up overhead. Interlock your thumbs. Just pull up. Holding the breath in. And again, if you have a mole bond practice, squeeze it. And exhale. We're going to come to bear grip. So your left hand faces out, right hand in. Bring your fingertips together and then grip them. And you give a slight pull. We're going to bring our arms up overhead. We're going to inhale, tilt over to the right. And exhale, tilt over to the left. Keep your sit bones planted. So your bum does not come up off the floor. You're just honoring where your body is. Stay connected to that breath. And inhaling sat, exhaling nam. Next time you're over to the right, pause and just take a few breaths. And come up. Tilt over to the left. Take a few breaths. We're not crashing forward or backwards here. We tend to have very tight obliques, very tight side bodies. Inhale, center. Exhale, relax the hands down, palms down on the knees. We're going to inhale, shrug the shoulders up. Exhale, relax them down. Go at your own pace. If you want to go really slow, it is absolutely acceptable. Just listen to yourself. Let me be the guide, but find that teacher within as well. The word guru. You know, oftentimes we attach that to a teacher, but really it's the teacher within that leads you from darkness to light, which is just sort of pulling you out of the shadows and shining that self-empowerment onto your being. Inhale up, exhale, relax completely. Bring your left hand out, tense your fingers at your side. I know you can't really see, but I'm directly in line with my side body. And then your right hand out and do the same thing. And just make a sort of triangle with your body. And we're gonna inhale and exhale, relax your shoulders. And then drop your left ear towards the shoulder until you feel a nice, gentle pull on the right side of the neck. And go to the point where you're pretty much at your maximum and just back off a little bit. And just breathe into that space. What that means is as you breathe, draw awareness to your shoulder, your right shoulder that expansion, that opening, the right side of the neck, and notice that gentle compression on the left side of the neck. 
if you start to get any tinglys here, any strong sensations, adjust yourself. Draw your head back a little bit to really feel that pull on the front side of your neck. And if it feels like it's too much, just come forward a little bit. Inhale, center, exhale, and drop the right ear to the right shoulder to some degree, just opening up the left side of the neck. Draw your head back slightly so you feel it in the front side of your neck. Maybe diagonally pull forward a little bit to soften the edge. center. Just relax your hands wherever they fall on your lap. Take a few breaths. Really check in with yourself. Just, just observe your body, observe your mind. Come from a place of non-attachment and non-judgment, which may seem foreign to you at this time, but the more that you attempt to do such, the more your brain will wrap around it and the easier it becomes Trust me, as somebody who used to have the messiest mind ever, and it's still, with a lot of practice, is still pretty messy, but I come from a very deep neurosis, <laughs> very deeply ingrained mental, just mental instability. And, you know, I didn't help by giving in to addictions for so long and then just experiencing what I experienced, you know, a lot of pain, a lot of sadness, a lot of self-inflicted destructive behaviors, but I'm thankful for every one of them because they brought me to where I am. They brought me to a place where I firmly believe I can help you relate to yourself and help you find the healing that you need. Bring our hands to our shins, fingers in front, thumbs in back. We're going to inhale, flex the spine forward, exhale, round it back. Start this movement from your pelvis. Your chin's going to stay pretty much parallel to the floor. Yes, you'll notice we're moving a bit today, but really, to tame the mind, you have to tame the body too. You have to learn to get it comfortable, learn to move it, learn to loosen up the tension, and then it becomes easier. Probably the most distracting thing during meditation is your body, you know, aches or discomforts, connective tissue compressing. It takes a, quite a bit of practice to make it comfortable, but some people are just bendy from the start. So 
don't judge, just move and breathe. So inhale forward, exhale back, inhale sat, exhale nam. Maybe you go slow, just really explore. Feel your pelvis moving, so your sit bones are, you know, it's like whenever I go forward, my pelvis tilts this way. When I go back, it tilts this way. So it's Just notice how whenever I'm tilting it forward, how much taller I get. Look at the doorknob behind my head. This is, this is the typical American posture. That's not what we want. What we want is that forward tilt. Oh yeah, beautiful. Do you get so much taller and when you're taller and bigger, you're freer. Inhale, center, hold the breath, engage up on mole bond, which is like you're stopping gas, holding in urination, squeeze in under the belly button, just the pelvic floor, your first and second chakra, and exhale, inhale. So inhale, stretch both of your arms up overhead. And as you exhale, start moving from your neck, look left, and then follow with your upper body until you feel your spine is twisting as far as it pretty much can. And then bring your right hand to your left knee and relax your left hand behind you. You know, check in that you're not falling forward or tilting back. And you know, we want this to be a gentle twist. To get the most out of these twists, you don't want to like, <laughs> yeah, we just we just go to where we're feeling it and just sit with it and breathe. And inhale going to come back center, raising the hands up overhand, then exhale to the opposite side, twisting to the right, and breathe. center and exhale take a few breaths <sighs> spinal health is very important to age gracefully you must have a loose spine. Or just, you look at many Westerners, they're tight. They're just like, they get old and they either like stuck like this, and they're like back bent like this, or they're just like upright, but they're so, we're so tight. Part of that is we don't emphasize how important stretching the body and mind are. You know, we become so rigid as we age. You, you look at a lot of people, you know, 60 plus, they're just so stuck in their ways. And none of us want to be stuck, man. We got to be water. We got to be fluid. We got to change with the times. We have to accept what's before us and just walk with it. Because if we spend our whole lives resistant, we end up miserable. 
just think about how many people that keep this, you know, keep the same job for 40 years and they are just, you know, you can see it in their eyes, like deep down in their soul, they're just, they're empty, you know, because they just like chased this whatever their entire lives and, you know, it really brought them nothing. It brought them money, which money is useful, but it's not the be all end all. There's so many miserable rich people and there's so many just blissful poor people. That right there is evidence enough, you know. It's very important that we find bliss. And bliss does not come from the external world. It is all here. It is within you. And until you realize that and you quit chasing the external world for bliss and you just start to tap into that within you, then, you know, yes, we may be attached to things, but it's a lot easier to just let go whenever we have to or to pull in whenever we have to just makes us much more adaptable and this year has been a year of adaptation for many of us and it is just really mind-blowing how many people I've seen so resistant to certain things and then other people you would think would just be super resistant to things are just kind of like meh gotta do it so on that note we're gonna do a mantra for oneness the mantra is Ong Song Wahe Guru Ong Song Wahe Guru We'll bring our left hand over heart, right hand over left. Yes, see, I'm wearing shorts. I told you they just scrunch up. Probably the last time I do a live, live stream in these shorts. But they're my morning yoga pants. It's a nice thing about being in the living room. You can wear whatever you want, even if you're broadcasting to the internet. So yes, Ong Song Wahe Guru. This means... The creative energy of the universe vibrates within every cell of me, essentially. Eyes closed. And as we chant this, really tune into your heart space and visualize a light in your heart space, a white or a green light. And as we chant the mantra, just see it expand and expand and expand and surround you and then those around you. If you don't have much practice with visualization, just tune into the mantra and feel your heart space. It's no pressure, except for the external pressure, meaning the internal pressure of the breath. So let's go ahead and eyes close. Inhale, Ong Song Wahe Guru. Song. Oh, 
your breath press into your heart to see that light around you vibrating a healing energy exhale hold the breath out inhale exhale relax the hands down just a few breaths Mantras are an excellent tool to learn how to meditate just because they give you a very like real thing to experience as you're doing it. And yes, your mind may be going in the background, but the mantras in the front of your mind, it makes it way easier to just sort of separate the two. It's amazing. The power of our minds. <laughs> we don't even really know the true potential in the West or anywhere for that matter. Probably not at this point. We're super disconnected. It's okay. If there's anything in particular you'd like to learn, drop a comment or reach out to me, email me, whatever. Call me. I'm available. 316-833-8134. And if you can support me um, on the website, there's a couple links on this uh, video in the comments or in the description. Uh, support me on Patreon. You can do a monthly thing, $5 a month, or just drop a donation. I'd be extremely grateful been putting a lot of energy into study and getting the practices out there and learning new things and I could use the support of the masses <laughs> in this journey. It is my greatest joy to teach, truly, from my heart, from my soul, from the depths of my being. Let's seal it today with three long satnams, one long om. Bring your palms together and rub them briskly. Close your eyes and just feel the energy moving to your hands. Heart center with the thumb, base of the thumbs pressed up against your sternum. Take a deep inhale. Exhale. Three long satnams, one long om. Inhale to begin. Satnam. Sat Nam Sat Nam Om. May we be open and receptive to that which will help us. May we see the things that do not serve us in our lives and learn to let them go. May we be at peace for now and always. Thank you so much for joining me. Satnam. Namaste. Mm, thank you all. And again, if you can support me, I'm pat I have a Patreon now. It's patreon.com flash through breath. I'm going to have a lot of exclusive videos up there, some more in-depth meditative practices. It's just sort of a way for me to funnel intent and support. I don't desperately need it, but I could definitely use it. I know that uh, a lot of you want to receive these teachings and 
you know, there's an energetic exchange that needs to happen. You kind of get what you pay for. You walk in and empty handed, you leave empty handed. So support your teachers, your local studios, even if it's not me, you know, throw something out there to the universe to give back always and ever. Thank you again. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Satnam. Mm.